Hi friends, my name is Borro Dante. Let's paint the real HDR bokeh. So this is going to be the first episode of many about 32-bit mode in Photoshop. Maybe not many, maybe a couple, but I really wanted to uncover this thing. This is the way I used to paint like a year ago, a couple of really huge paintings I did, where everything is blended as materials in 3D rendering. And I've been using 32-bit color mode for those paintings. And that's really important. So today we're gonna kind of like open the door of it and create a really cool effect that everyone can play with. I think it's a really cool thing to play around. Bokeh is, if you don't know, it's a thing on the picture on the screen right now, I suppose, when you can see a big colorful circles made from bright light spots in the background when it's out of focus. It's a photography term. Now, the problem is, if you did not achieve that effect in a photograph, it's really hard to make it work well afterwards, like in Photoshop or whatever, because there's basically almost no HDR in captured images. But we can simulate one. Let's start. Okay, at first I thought let's start in 8-bit mode, you can see it here, It's this 8 means we're in 8-bit mode. Let's create some relatively dark background, kind of like this, and just create a couple of bright light spots. So the brightest color available in 8-bit mode is, well, basically white. So I'm just creating a couple of bright light strokes, let's maybe do something weird with the brush maybe this kind of stuff. So the point is we just have some bright spots on the image. And now we'll use this relatively new blur gallery thing and choose like tilt shift effect. So here we have the blurring effect around the line in the middle that we can move however we want and increase the effect. And you can see some bokeh actually appearing due to a pretty huge contrast between dark blue and the white color. So in this sense it's kind of working out. But let me show you something more. What if the light spot that we want to show is let's say orange. So let's create a couple of bright orange spots. And maybe bright blue too. Also, just for the sake of experiment, I'll add white core in a couple of these. Because this is what an actual bright light spot would look like on a photograph. Well, kind of. I mean, the core was always gonna be brighter. So we have this. And this is the kind of nonsense we have here. Like, it's super soft, it's just a basic blur. We don't really get any bokeh effect. Only at a very huge distance we kind of see it, but it's still very blurry and very dark. We can't really tell Photoshop that this is a very bright light spot, because completely white color in 8-bit mode can be, I don't know, the color of the white sheet of paper. And next to it there will be a completely white light source, and it will be the same thing if it's an 8-bit. So, we don't have any space to tell that something is like really bright. And that's when 32-bit comes into play. Let's actually save this document and then resave what we have in a different one. And go to Image, Mode and choose 32-bit. Don't flatten anything. Okay, right now it's basically the same thing. You can see it changed a little bit. And that's because of the different type of gamma we have to deal with in 32-bit mode. But we'll talk about it in a moment. Right now let's do some cool bokeh. Bokeh. I actually googled how to pronounce it. It's bokeh. It's a Japanese term. Now, coolerus is useless from this point because it doesn't support any 32-bit things. So now we use a basic color picker thing. And you can see it has a few improvements if you're familiar with Photoshop. And the thing is, we can choose color the way we always chose it, but there's more. There's intensity and there's this steps thing. Now, the point is that aside from choosing just the color, we can choose its brightness as if this is a light of this color. And it can be like bright and very bright and insanely bright if we want to. 
Now, check this out. Let's create... What did we have here? An orange light source. A bit closer to red. And you can see in here, like if we go darker with steps, step is basically from 0 to 1. So what we see here, from black to white, this is one step. But then, 32-bit mode allows us to go from white to double white, and then to triple white. And this is what these steps do, so if I choose plus 3, the actual color that I'm gonna paint with is this bright yellow. But don't be confused, my friend. It's not actually yellow, it's just really bright, dark orange. Let's put this aside, we'll just compare it to the thing, because this is basically the same thing, it's still in 8-bit mode, kind of. In 8-bit limits. So, you can see I'm already painting with a lightsaber here. And this is what's awesome about painting with really bright colors. You can literally paint with light. So, I think from this point it's pretty obvious how this is going to work, but let's do the thing. Couple of bright spots. And when we're looking at the actual light source, like the light source itself, we'll take a look at conveniently placed Christmas light. So we can see the actual red color, the red and green you can see only around the light source, but the light source itself is going to be basically white spots. Because it's too bright. If uh, the camera would adjust to the brightness of the light source, I would be black. So, this is why we're painting orange light source and it almost looks like white. It's like very bright yellow. Now, let's choose that green thing. And we can actually go a bit darker because we'll get this cool curve from blue to cyan color. So, this is the kind of effect we're gonna have. So, let's do a couple of these. Do I have some kind of spray brush? I think I do, but not a simple one, of course. Cool. Thrust. Oh, this will do. Yeah, this will work a lot faster, although it's not very opaque. So you can see there are certain laws. If we're getting, like, on the upper side of this perfect blue color, the very bright color will get closer to purple or pink. And if we'll get to this side, it will try to reach the key and color on the other side. And same thing goes everywhere. So basically R, G and B are the base colors, the dark ones. And the key and magenta and yellow are the ones that are trying to reach when they're getting super bright. I'm not sure how they call this law of how colors distort with brightness and darkness, but I'm pretty sure there is a name for it. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> now let's do a couple of more maybe mix them together. We actually can use the color picker and just copy the color, it works well. It's just an actual color, it's still that info in there that is like super bright. So we have this. Now let's create some bouquet. And we can already see how it works in a very different color space. And this looks really close to a photo. If here we have super pale, boring colors, then here we actually see the very cool distortion. Especially if we'll move the center of the focus closer, we'll see this awesome change in brightness and the darker colors will appear more. In here, the brightness of the colors are basically within the first step, within the limits of 8-bit mode. So this is just basic color. God, I love to play with this thing. So this is the result, and guess what, this thing, the whole HDR effect works with any kind of distortion effect in Photoshop. Meaning, if we choose a simple finger tool, and I don't know, what kind of brush do we choose? Snowy Flare? Well, it works very weird. But the thing is, you can see how it's not exactly a simple way, it's distorting it. Because this bright blue is dominating, it's increasing its space without visually getting actually transparent. Because there's so much color in one pixel that it's when it's spreading, it's still that color. So this is basically the main thing of 32-bit mode. We can paint with bright light and it's actually going to be in the pixels. And there's a lot of cool stuff we can do with it, but we'll talk about it later. Now let's do another composition with bright lights. So I'm trying to set it up to be as bright 
as possible, as opaque as possible. And we can actually make the color insanely bright, so we're plus two more steps, those 5.3 steps. This is gonna be insane. So we can re really see just almost completely white spots. So there, and let's make the background a bit darker even. Here we go, this is an awesome contrast. I think this illustrates the ADA a lot better. And here we have really sharp circles of bokeh effect, so it's like the real deal. This is literally how it works in the mechanics of the lens of the camera with the photons and reality and stuff. And that's how it looks so awesome. And if we put this top layer in add mode, nothing's going to actually change. Actually, the whole system of blending modes of layers works quite differently in 32-bit. Now, let's go through some theory for those who's interested. I'm gonna use my lightsaber for this. First thing first, let's go through the uh, three modes in here. What's the difference between them? And why we're choosing 32 bits instead of 16? That's why. To illustrate, let's just create just a thingy. This is one step. This is from zero to one. One is white, zero is black. And we have 255 divisions in here. That's how basic 8-bit mode works. That's how all of your monitors work. If you're not like super professional that works with super cool monitor. And there are two main problems with 8-bit mode if you are going to work with the image of 8-bit mode. If you want to adjust it, you know, increase contrast or something like that, reveal some details, you're not gonna get any because it's just literally fitting perfectly inside of what the monitor can show. And any change in the color will reveal some artifacts. Let me show you. Let's open the first document that was in the 8-bit. So we have a black and white gradient, but let's choose a way, way less of a contrasty thing. Like from slightly dark gray to slightly bright gray. Oh, I'm not sure if it's gonna be noticeable in the video, but like it's already visible. Let's squish out a little bit of contrast and you'll see it immediately. There it is. It's supposed to be a completely continuous, perfect gradient, but it's not, because only these steps in this piece of gradient of black and white, are very close to colors, they actually have this size of steps, it's really big. There's no color exists between this and this in 8-bit mode. So this is the color bending problem. And one way to solve it, if you're just having a problem with color banding, you can do what I used to do before I started playing with 32 bits, like five years ago. I painted in 16 bit mode. And this thing will allow you to avoid any banding. Because if this thing right here is an 8 bit mode, then 16 bit, what means 16 bit instead of 8 bit? It doesn't mean that there's gonna be double amount of colors. It means it's going to have double amount of digits for the colors. In binary system, but still, that's a lot more numbers than just double amount. So, in 16-bit, this division is gonna have so many points that is basically just going to be a continuous line here. But the limits are gonna stay between 0 and 1. It's not necessary for 16-bit to do this, but this is how it works in Photoshop. I remember, maybe in Krita, there was two choices between 16-bit integer and 16-bit floating point. It means it's gonna have a lot wider range of brightness, so basically we're gonna have the super bright colors. Although I'm not sure how it works in Krita in general, like how good the whole approach in there. I just remember there was a thing about it. So let's repeat, I changed the mode to 16-bit in the old document, and let's create a similar situation. But right now it's already created in 16-bit, and now let's try to squish out the contrast and we'll see that it doesn't reveal any problem whatsoever. Even if we squish like super hard, you will see no steps whatsoever is going to be perfect radiant. Because there's that huge amount of steps that is just way bigger than you can imagine. Cool, huh? 
And well, if we go to 32-bit, it actually have, let's make it a lot smaller, 20 steps. Like if we go darker, minus 20 to plus 20. So there's 41 step, including the first one, right? Let's just imagine 41 thing fits in here. And yes, no color banding is going to take place as well at all. Because this is just an astronomic amount of bits in there. The values of colors is so huge that it's just, it has no limitations at all. You can simulate reality with this amount of colors. So right now, if I want to bring back the gradient, I won't be able to do it because even in 16-bit, if we hit white, it's gonna stay white forever. But in 32-bit, I'll create the gradient as well. And we'll use levels instead of curves because curves don't work in 32-bit. So here, I squished it insanely, so there's totally a loss in the black area and in the white area. Now, let's go backwards and let's try to bring back the color. You see, it's still all there. Amazing! So it doesn't matter, when it hits white, it means it just goes beyond that roof and somewhere in here, when it can only appear as pure white and in here as pure black. But the whole values thing, we can see how exactly it gets brighter and darker. So the whole information stays intact. We can bring it back any moment. Now, the last thing. You can see that the gradient, for instance, in here, if I create the effect, we can see a pretty, well, generic gradient from black to white. It's normal. Somewhere in here there's a middle gray and in here it looks kind of weird because middle gray is somewhere around here and then there's just a huge stretched light gray half and the whole darkness is only in here. So the gradient in 32-bit gets brighter a lot faster. Even in here we can see that the darkness is a super small piece of the color picker and everything else is light and white out kind of contrary to here that we can see how there's a lot of shady area in here and we can choose all kinds of colors a lot more conveniently sort of and that's because 32-bit has linear gamma and there's a reason for that in basic monitors in basic color space of 8-bit and well 16-bit they use the curve well, the colors, they go a little bit like this. Like, this is the normal way the color would go in 8-bit mode. Because it actually looks normal this way, for a human eye. Meaning, in actual values, this is an actual middle gray. But it looks too bright for our eyes. It's just the way it is, deal with it. So, that's why there's this correction of so-called 2.2 gamma curve. Which means that this gamma value is stretched down like this is the same way linear mode works this is the exact same gradient right now that we saw in 32-bit document to achieve this gamma in here we're gonna have to stretch it to 0.45 see this gradient becomes the same everything else goes to shit but this is the same because that's how gamma works this is like the nerdiest episode of all nerdiest episodes ever I have ever created, ever witnessed forever. Well, I guess this is it for now. I hope I'll edit this out into something viewable because I nerded out for over an hour non-stop. So yeah, I hope it was helpful or interesting for someone out there. Because this is like a huge thing about 32-bit painting that I've never seen anyone actually use. And I don't use it myself right now, but I think it's like super cool to know this stuff, how it works, to understand colors and how computers think when you're painting with them. So yeah, till next time when we'll go through some actual painting, so for now, I thank you for watching. If you did, I guess you did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe. Tell a friend. Paint with the light. Do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one. Bye! I am the Lord of Light.